all right then uh, welcome back everyone so let's solve this question uh vasilis and uh, kakak so i hope i've not <laughs> mispronounced pronouncing the names but anyway so i assume that you have read the question once uh, but i'll still uh, for sake of completion read the question so the question says uh basically uh vasilis this guy is given a problem to solve is given three positive integers n k and x and he has to determine if he can choose k distinct integers this is important between one and n one and n such that sum is equal to x okay so the question is simple uh we have integers from one to n and uh we are allowed to pick any k of them okay k distinct not any k uh any k of them but they have to be distinct and what we have to find out is whether by picking k distinct integers in this range one to n can we make this sum x that's uh, what we want to find so basically we have to print yes if it is possible to choose this k distinct integers between one and n such that the sum is equal to x no if it isn't okay so you can auto answer in any case the question is clear to you guys right uh, you are basically given these three things n k and x so what you have is uh, you can choose k distinct integers in the range 1 to n and you have to say if you can uh, uh, make basically pick this k distinct integers and sum them is there sum equal to x right so basically we want to print yes if we can make this uh, x otherwise no now if you are in this video of course you have seen the test cases and you are not able to make sense out of it so let's see uh, the beauty about this question is uh, like uh, the intuition is easy uh, but the proof uh, is very beautiful and uh, i really want you to want every one of you to understand the proof here because uh, it clears a lot of uh, fundamentals regarding the contradictory proofs and induction proofs that we usually do in uh, competitive programming so solving the question uh, yeah uh, solving the question is very easy you'll see it is a very stupid question but uh, the proof proving that this is the answer is very important for this question so i hope uh, you will stay with me till the end uh, to derive the proof with me okay so let us see uh, try and try to make some observations here so basically uh, we are given three things right uh, n k and x okay and we want to see whether uh, by picking k distinct integers we can make this some x okay so for as an always as always uh, let's uh, take some examples so let me just take a uh, since you have to pick some integers right so let's take some what bigger example of n maybe a uh, 10 or 11 something like that or maybe let's just take uh 10 okay 10 seems to be a good number and uh, k uh 3 seems to be a good number here right 3 seems to be a good number so basically uh, we have integers like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 and we can pick any three of them uh, we can pick uh, any three distinct integers at a time so all in all there are like 10 c3 ways right so we can pick any three distinct integers from it and uh, from the sum and we want to check whether it is equal to the sum x okay fine now uh, whether that sum is equal to x basically all right so they like thinking uh, how should i think about it so first things first uh, let's figure out the bounds right let's figure out the bounds when i pick this k elements and i pick this k elements what is the lowest that i can get and what is the highest that i can get right so basically maybe uh, like it's a like if you think in that direction like it makes sense right so randomly thinking about how how will i pick k elements to make this number x uh, might not be a great thing so but thinking about the bounds uh, is a good idea here right so let's think about it so what are the bounds here if you see so we have to pick three elements right so what what is the smallest element uh, what is the smallest element that you can get see you have to pick three elements okay you have no option you have to pick three elements so what will be the smallest sum here uh, it is easy to observe that this will be this sum right so what is this 6 and what will be the largest possible sum uh, it is uh, this part right 8 9 10 so basically 9 plus 19 plus 27 okay so basically the smallest sum that you can get is 6 and the largest sum that you can get is 27 right so the low here or uh, lower bound on our basically x right so basically any x will be given to you but uh, x is bounded by x has to be greater than this 6 and x has to be less than uh, greater than equals to 6 and ha x has to be less than equals to 27 right uh, obviously yeah, this is a, this is a very obvious thing mm. but this thing see <laughs> minimum at the minimum you can only get this sum in the worst case you can get either 6 as the lowest sum or 27 as the largest sum okay your x has to lie between these so what i'm saying is if x is less than low so if, if x is less than 6 uh, or x is greater than high x is greater than high okay so this is what i'm saying x is less than low or greater than high it is out of bounds x has to lie in this range right so x has to lie in this range of 6 to 27 or should i say low and high low and high so if x is less than low or x is greater than high uh, then uh, no it is not possible now fine so if it is out of bounds so less than 6 sum is not possible greater than 27 sum is not possible what about the range uh, 6 to 27 can you get all the sum between 6 to 27 is my question to you like right so 
can i write something like this if x is in the range low to high can i always get to sum can i always get to sum can i write something like this is the question that i want to ask right so let's see uh, how can we go about it okay so i've taken an example here so the same example we know the smallest possible sum that you can get is 6 and highest possible sum that you can get is 27 i want to see whether i can get all the possible values between 6 and 27 okay so here you have 6 right so can you get 7 now see we just want one more right so instead of this 3 just pick 4 so 1 2 and then 4 so yes you can get 7 fine okay so if we figured out that we can get 7 now can i get 8 see this is how you got 7 right this is how you got 7 so instead of this 4 just pick 5 you can get 8 can you get 9 can you get 9 yes instead of 5 just pick 6 can you get 10 yes you can get 10 similarly you can get 11 similarly you can get 12 similarly you can get 13 right so 7 to 13 you can get fine now can you get 14 is my question can you get 14 is my real question to you can you get 14 you just want one more right you just want one more so can you find an element uh, can you find an element uh, such that uh, that element is there but that element plus one is not there so basically two is here but two plus one three is not part of it right so yeah it is there so i'll just remove this two and just include this three fine so don't worry uh, keep going you'll understand what i'm trying to do here so 14 you can get fine now you got 14 can you get 15 of course instead of this three take four you can get 15. can you get uh, 16 now <laughs> can you get 16 so, okay you can get 15 here right so 15 is there okay so one four and ten can you get 16 now instead of this four pick five instead of this four pick five right so 16 is possible similarly uh 17 is possible right 17 is possible 18 is possible 19 is possible right 20 is possible so 14 to 20 is possible right 14 to 20 is possible 14 to 20 is possible fine now is 21 possible so right now you see uh what you want is if you want to make the 21 is possible what you need to find out is you need to find out some integer here uh, some number here such that uh, just one number greater than it is not present in your current set of k elements right so what you can do is you can remove that guy and pick the, the just one greater than it right so basically see guys what i'm saying is uh, right now you are at some 20 right 1 plus 9 plus 10 20 you want to make some 21 so what do you need you need the sum to be uh, incremented by just one right so you need to find a element here uh, in your set of k element such that uh, that element plus one is right now not present inside the set so you can just replace it with that guy and now you get the desired sum right just one plus so i'll just remove this one and now you get this two right so basically now 21 is present now you got 21 is present fine so so 21 is present now uh, can you get 22 of course remove this two get this three right is 23 present yes right is 24 present yes is 25 present yes is 26 present yes right and 27 is anyway present 27 is anyway present right so 21 to 27 26 is also there 6 and 27 anyway was possible right so what just happened here uh, what just happened here what did you saw every number basically you just found out if x is in range if x is in range x is in range low and high then it is always possible else no it's not possible right else it is not possible right so that's that uh, if x is in range low to high then it's always possible otherwise it's not possible fine so we just uh, saw intuitive understanding of how it worked uh, so right so let's just uh, quickly see the solution for it because in the context that's what you need to do like uh, <laughs> you got the intuitive understanding of it okay it works you found out that if x is in this range yes else no i took a bigger example uh, deliberately to make you guys understand now so yeah basically that's the code uh, only thing that is remaining is finding out this low and high like how do you formulate this low and high so let's see formulating this low is very very easy it is just sum of first k and okay sorry for that so formulating this uh, low is very easy it's just the sum of first uh, k natural numbers right so what is this the sum of first k natural numbers you know that right so this is just k k plus one by two the low is very easy fine and uh what you want is what you want is uh this part now right so how do you get this part this part, uh, if you think about it, <laughs> if you think a little bit, this is also not not that difficult. So you want to get this sum, right? You want to get this sum. So what you can do is, uh, can you find this sum? What is this? This sum of first n n natural numbers, right? So this you have, n n plus one by two. This you have. Can you just uh, subtract this part out of it? What is this? See, guys, these are k elements, right? 
So this will be n minus k elements. So what is this part? 1 to 7. Sum of first n minus k natural numbers. So that is n minus k, n minus k plus 1 by 2. Right. So basically from n into n plus by 2, you just subtract this part and you will get this thing. Right. So okay, I'll repeat myself. The lower bound is very simple. It is simply the sum of first k natural numbers. Nothing much here. But now you want to find out the sum of this last k numbers. So what you can do is you can find the sum, sum of first n natural numbers and just subtract the sum of first n minus k natural numbers and you will get basically the sum of last k numbers. So this is how you find out lower bound and upper bound and the code is pretty straightforward. <laughs> There's nothing much to code that I have to show you in editor. This is the lower bound k into k plus 1 by 2 and the upper bound is n n plus 1 by 2 uh, minus n minus k into n minus k plus 1 by 2. The only important thing here is uh, I have taken here long long uh, uh, because I don't want to risk it for the like overflow cases. So maybe the constraints uh, were a little bit high, right? Yeah, see, guys, the constraints were high. So 10 part 10, right? So it will definitely go out of bounds of integer. So that's why I took long, long here. So the trick was, see, figuring out this thing is very observation based. I guess a lot of you might have figured out. But like, what is the common mistake in this question is, you'll not write here long, long. You will write here int and overflow will happen here. Uh, because I also done this mistake a lot of times. Not in this question, but yeah. This will cause an overflow if you take integer, right? This multiplication will cause an overflow. Okay, anyway, since now n and k are this around 10 power 10 any anyway, overflow will happen fine so the question is simple then x is greater than equals to low and x is less than high then yes if it is in range low to y then yes otherwise no 